Hi there, Nigel Saunders here of KW Bonsai. Today we're looking at ponytail palms as bonsai. This is my old ponytail palm that I've had for probably 15 years now. It started as a little tiny bulb that I was using as a... I think I was using it in a jungle planting or something at one time. And it just kept growing and growing and I would repot it into a bigger pot. And it was never really intended as a bonsai tree. However, it's uh, it's getting quite old now, and it's starting to get some really nice bark on it, and looking quite mature. So, it is now being trained as a uh, a bonsai tree. The ponytail palm is also known as the elephant's foot palm because it looks like an elephant's foot. The base of it, it it gets swollen. It stores all kinds of water in this base. Uh, they're not a true palm tree. They're a member of the lily family. And they come from eastern Mexico is where they originate from. In nature, these trees can live a very long time. They can live 350 to 450 years. Uh, they can get quite large. And uh, so let's start this video by taking a look at some images off the internet of ponytail palms. Uh, some of them wild. Some of them are planted as garden plants. Um, so let's have a look at some of the larger, older ponytail palms. Today we're going to be doing some cleanup work on the ponytail palm. We're going to be lightly pruning it, cleaning up the dead leaves, and trimming back the foliage on the existing leaves. When pruning this tree, it's always recommended that you keep some of the green growth on the, uh, the stem that's growing, rather than cut back to just wood. However, on some of these shoots here at the back, I have cut them right back to bare wood. And on this one I got two sprouts coming off of it. And this one never did sprout, but I got another sprout here beside it. So it does sort of work. Um, I'm going to try doing that again in midsummer when we re repot the tree. Uh, it's recommended you repot these trees in midsummer when it's nice and warm out. And we'll do some pruning at the same time, some severe pruning. It seemed to work well on my yucca trees, pruning them midsummer rather than in spring. So we'll be doing that this year. Around the back of the tree, about three years ago, I cut a doorway in here, and this was going to be part of a fairy garden landscape. And I've decided I didn't want to pursue that. Uh, I wanted to make the tree look more, keep it looking natural. So. I'm going to let that uh, heal over and I think someday it'll all blend in again. The tree's starting to grow some aerial roots here and here from where I cut out the doorway long ago. And it, it's callousing over really nicely all inside and at the edges. So, you know, hollowing out a ponytail palm is no problem for the health of the tree. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll probably let that heal over eventually. It'll become kind of a feature on the tree, maybe. The first operation we're going to do today, I'm going to peel off all these, all these leaves that have gone brown and some of the lower leaves. So starting at the bottom, we'll just peel back these leaves. Get rid of all these brown ones. Ones that are starting to go yellow. And this is natural. You know, the growth will just keep extending up top. The leaves on the ponytail palm are really sharp. They're similar to the yucca. If you run your finger along it, it'll cut your skin open. So you have to be very careful that you don't go running your hand up and down the leaves. They're like little saw blades. These leaves I'm pulling off, they are from about a year ago. So they stay on the stem for quite a long time before they go brown and fall off. Uh, you can see some of them have been pruned. The ends have been trimmed from last year. 
when I did this same operation. So we're kind of peeling off the leaves up to kind of this year's growth. The leaves on a ponytail palm can grow quite long. Um, some of these leaves are, you know, an arm's length long. So it, it makes for quite a large plant when I try and fit it in the plant room. So what we can do, the ends of the leaves can be cut shorter. And I like to put a point on the end, so I'll, uh, I'll prune them with the scissors. With the scissors, I'll cut them on an angle, quite a sharp angle, like that. And then I'll go in and make a point on the end like so. So it's not straight across. It doesn't look like you cut it with the scissors. It looks a little more natural. So cutting the leaves is totally optional. If you find your plants getting really big and taking over your, your house, you uh, may want to leaf prune it to get it more compact so it takes up less space. The more leaf area you have, the more vigorous the tree will be. But you know, there's a compromise between space and practicality. Trimming the leaves also makes it look a little more miniature. If you imagine this to be a giant ponytail palm, the leaves would be shorter coming out of the growth points on the tree, so it gives it a miniature look. The ends of the leaves where you do cut them will go slightly brown, but it's not very noticeable. Before I start shortening the leaves by cutting them with the scissors, I'm going to reduce our growing tips down in height so the tree's not so tall, and it may encourage some subdividing from our growing points on our branches. So let's pick a point where we still have some green foliage, but, but we uh, take the tip off the branch. So here we go on this one. We'll come in right about here. There we go. So here's the cut point. You don't need to seal it or anything. It'll uh, heal itself. You can see there's, you know, we've cut through some of the leaves. On the inside, there'll be new leaves growing. And we may get some subdividing in this area. So we may go from one branch to two branches, hopefully, or one trunk to two trunks. So let's cut our second trunk off now. And again, we're gonna pick a point where we still have some green leaves below. Somewhere about here. There we go. Lots of leaves come off. By pruning off these vigorous growing tips, I'm hoping it'll stimulate these smaller shoots to grow with more vigor because we haven't touched those. So we're hoping to get two things, more branching and kind of balance the vigor of the tree. Now with the foliage that's left, I'm going to leaf prune it down to a smaller size and we're going to leave the ones higher up. They'll be shorter. And as it goes down in the growth, they'll be a little longer. I do like the natural look of them all hanging down. It's just they're a little too long. We're not going to touch our smaller shoots. We're just going to try and increase the vigor on those. So we're only going to leaf prune our strong growing tips. Next, I want to clean up our landscape. So I want to pull out some of these weeds. I finished weeding the tree. So the next thing I want to do is uh, the soil level is kind of bumpy. Uh, it's up high in some places here. It's kind of low here. So what I want to do is just rake away the excess soil, get the soil level or slightly below the lip of the pot, and then uh, we'll have to prune off some of these roots that are higher up also. So I'm gonna take the tree outside and I'm going to rake away some of this surface soil and level it out. I finished raking off a layer of soil from the surface and now it's time to go in and root prune any roots that are sticking up. These roots are really tough. They're uh, like wire. So you'll need, you'll need some fairly sharp pruners to do this. I like my bonsai trees to take me away to a 
far off place in the world. In this case, it's Mexico in a hot, arid, dry desert. So I want to put a layer of sand underneath the tree on top of the soil to give me that feeling of I'm in the desert. Let's start putting our sand on now. So we're just going to put a thin layer, enough to cover up all these root hairs that are sticking up. I finished putting all the sand around the base of the tree. It definitely gives it a more desert-like feeling. I kind of like it. Next we want to give the tree a good watering and then let it dry out thoroughly before watering it again. So I think I'm going to just use the spray bottle for watering it. That'll disturb the sand a little less. So here we go with the watering. We'll just keep watering it until we get water running out the drainage holes. The ponytail palm, like a lot of desert trees, can take a little bit of frost. I bring mine in before the temperatures get that low, but it is possible they could survive a slight frost. That's all the work we'll be doing on our ponytail palm this today. Next steps, it's just in a plastic training pot right now, so I think, you know, it's old enough and mature enough that it will probably deserve a nice bonsai pot when we repot it this coming summer. And we're going to try and get our foliage a little more equalized, so, you know, we give this side the sunny side in the plant room, try and keep... Uh, our vigorous growing tips reduced or pruned back so it encourages the growth in these the finer tips here. So Nigel Saunders of KW Bonsai, do something green today, take care of yourself, eat healthy, exercise, live a good long life, and grow bonsai trees. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.